Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business. This is Victor Campos. So today we're going to look at Pinterest. We'll see how we can set up Pinterest for business, creating boards to organize our content and using search. So if you look at the other videos in this series, you'll see that many concepts overlap. If you understand them in one network, you can apply them to another. And then we'll see how each of the networks has uniqueness. So let's head over to Pinterest.com. And if you've already got an account, you can sign in. But Pinterest has a business account that you need to set up. It's found here under the home page. At the very bottom, I see businesses. So there's a portal to log in for businesses. Get discovered, increase consideration, drive results. So this takes us to business.pinterest.com. And I would look at this portal here at your own pace so that you can get case studies, ideas, see how other companies do it. So I'll go through the process briefly of joining as a business. I need an email, password, business name, type, and website, which is optional. But I would say definitely fill in your website if you have one. Under business type, you should be able to select the business that makes sense for you. I'm going to choose local business for my fictional Victor's Bakery. And I'll create the account. We're first asked to follow five topics. This is going to help us with inspiration. As we run our social media campaigns, we might get writer's block. So if we follow various topics, that'll give us inspiration to further create more content. And that goes for every network, of course. Your business should follow other people or businesses so that you can get inspiration. Food and drink is one that makes sense for this business. Perhaps health and fitness. And then I have to search because I need more topics. Let's say I search for food, food photography, baking. I can choose plenty more here. Baking, healthy baking. And I just want to get five so I can continue. So I get the home screen of content of what I have followed, the topics. I'll get back to the screen later. On the top left corner, I have the Pinterest icon, which will always take me back to the screen. I have a screen for analytics where I can get an overview, check my profile, who I reach. I've got the ad system where I can reach even a better audience. And this, like on every social network, is very valuable. Paying to reach more of an audience on a social network works. Although, of course, it's not free. So that may be something you may want to do later on. We have search, which we'll get into a little later. We've got this explore screen where we will find more content. Start pinning so we can upload images and such. Any notifications that may have happened. And my own profile. So like every other network, you want to go to your profile and fill it in as soon as possible. Unlike other networks, it's not using the standard icon to edit the settings of your profile, which would be a gear. Here it's more of a nut, like nuts and bolts. So you want to click on that nut and you want to edit your profile. Have it as complete as possible. Picture about the business location and such. This is the screen where you also select your Pinterest name. At the moment, it's pinterest.com slash victorsbakery0452. If you want a simpler name or the same name as your other networks, this is where you choose it. I'll return to the profile and talk about an important goal for you as a business on Pinterest. You want to create boards. So boards are collections of your pins. A pin is what you share on Pinterest. You upload a picture, video, and such content. That's a pin. You want to then organize those pins into boards. These pin boards are going to be groups of ideas. So to create a pin board, you can just click. You'll be asked a couple of things here. What's its name? Is it secret? I would say most of the time you don't want a secret board. You want as many people as possible to be able to view this board. So I can make a board called Recipes. And that would be okay, but it's too generic. Most of the secret of social media is that you want to reach an audience, a specific audience. 
you want to target. So having something called simply recipes is not targeted enough. Look at the suggestions it's giving me here. Places to go or recipes to make. So it's more active. Kids recipes to try would be a better name for this board than simply recipes. Ultimately, I'm trying to sell baked goods at victorsbakery.com and I'm using social media to drive traffic to my site. Easy recipes to try at home. I'm going to sell cupcakes and cookies and all that good stuff. But I'm also going to give away recipes of some of these baked goods that I make. Not the original recipes, not the perfect recipe, but enough of an interesting recipe that people uh, pay attention to me, give me notice, try out my wares. So I created this board and then I need to populate it. Most likely populate it with my own content. So then I would click to upload an image or save a picture from a site. I'll do that in a moment. It's recommending searches to me. I can populate a board with other people's photos as well, other people's content. And that has some value because I would say Pinterest is one of the most share-happy types of networks. You're going to share your own content, yes, but you're, going to, but you're also going to share other people's content to get attention. In the other videos I talked about liking other people's content, commenting on other people's content so that you can get activity back. I'm going to go back to the profile and create another board. A goal would be to create two to five boards to start off. I'll create one more. This time I'll call it San Diego Goodies. Here I'm using the keyword of San Diego. People may search that. They may find this board. San Diego Baked Goodies. I'm going to focus on my own content, of course, my own pictures, but I'm happy to include other people's as well. So I've got a new board. I can further make changes to the board to increase its findability by clicking on the pencil of the board, or I can add a description. This description could be a couple sentences with more keywords to help me get found. In this example, I wrote, only the best baked goods from all corners of San Diego. Do you like cookies, Mexican breads? How about a nice birthday cake? We've got you covered. So the voice of your social network is going to be something you develop and that you get good at as you use social media. If you have a marketing plan, be sure to refer to it at all stages of social media so you can reach the best audience. I'm going to categorize the board so I can get found. Food and drink works here. And if I would like collaborators, that is other people that are authorized to add content to this board, I can add their email here. And they, of course, need to have a Pinterest account. As I said, I would recommend two to five boards. Once you create boards, however, you also want to populate them. You don't want to leave the boards empty because then it looks like your profile is not complete. So you need to add a few photos per board so that it doesn't look empty. I'm going to add something now. If I go to the add icon, I'll try to first upload an image. I need to select the image and then a destination URL. This is optional, but the beauty of this link is that when anyone clicks on your picture, what you've pinned to Pinterest, it can then take them back to whatever website you designate here. So if I had some nice photos of food, I can select them to upload them. I've got something here, salad dressing. This could be a link back to one of the recipes on our site. And when people click, they can view. And when people click, they can follow the link. Continue takes me to the screen to choose which board should I pin this to. Now be careful here. As soon as you select a board, it will pin it to that board. It won't give you a chance to add any more description to this pin. So I would add a description to this pin first and then set it to the board. As always, I would include keywords, simple sentences that describe the photo. That helps your findability. And then I would select the board. If I didn't have a board, I could create one. But again, remember to populate these boards for maximum efficiency. After adding something to a board, I get a pop-up of recommendations. I'm going to ignore it for the moment. It'll go away. 
well, that was like free advertising for someone on Pinterest. I eventually might get that as well via various factors such as being active, how popular I am and so forth. So I've got one pin in one of my boards and the rest of it looks pretty sparse. So I'd want to add more pins to that board so that it looks like it actually is populated. The other way that I can share is save from site. This is going to ask for a for an address and it may recommend to use the browser button. If I add the browser button to my web browser, I'll be able to pin content easier. So let's say I have a link. What happens when I add a link is that Pinterest scans that page to find images. Images then I can upload to Pinterest. The more you use this technique on Pinterest, the more Pinterest will see that there is content in the Pinterest system. So I'm going to select a picture. This will again ask me, where would you like to place it? What board and what description? Add the description first and then select the board. This picture obviously has nothing to do with any of the content of this profile, but it is just to illustrate to you, you can easily upload pictures from your site, which will then also inherit the link back to the site. Let me show that. In this case, I'm creating a brand new board at this moment. As soon as I select to create, it'll pin it. So again, make sure you add the description and then select the board. It got saved to my text stuff. I can further promote this pin, close the window, see it on Pinterest. Promoting pins is of course paying to have your content viewed by more people. I'll choose to see it now. So people would see this pin where it was saved from and that they can visit the original link. By using a URL to share, it automatically gets the link back to my site, therefore driving people back to my website. That might be one of the best ways to share to Pinterest. Save from site. That assumes you have a website with content that you can then share to Pinterest. You saw that by visiting my example site here, this is a blog with plenty of articles, pictures, and text. I then shared to Pinterest and now it's part of the whole Pinterest system. I can see related pins. Pinterest is pretty smart because it sees this audio recording equipment and understands that it's audio recording equipment. So various other pins appear similarly. Various pins of various people and companies throughout Pinterest. And it works really well. Look at all of this audio equipment. Well, except for this car dashboard. It's not quite the same. But it's pretty smart and shows related content. Oh, there's a telephone there, but it's like 99% correct. So your pins will eventually show up like this to other people the more you're active. Let's look at the explore window for a moment. Welcome to the best ideas on Pinterest today. So here are various concepts that may give me inspiration so that I can share my own content. Heart shaped desserts. So I can create content like this. Be sure to use that explore screen for inspiration. You can then also search. The more I use Pinterest, the more it'll understand what my business is about. Keto recipes. So from the ketogenic diet, I see several examples of inspiration. So as usual, like most social networks, the more you use them, the more it makes sense. By looking at Pinterest through the lens of the previous networks that we've looked at, you should see that it's different than other networks, but very familiar. You're posting content, linking back to your website, searching, exploring, and being active. We, of course, here with Pinterest would click on various people's content so that you can comment, reply, like, and share. The point of that is to let them be aware of your existence. After all, you should put the social in social media, whether it be a person or a business. You're going to divide your time between original content 
and being active. So whatever your business is, you're going to search the various topics to become active. Don't get discouraged that in the beginning you don't have much activity. Social media is a full-time job. Social media requires time and effort. So the more you do it, the more success you'll have. For social media for your business, this has been Victor Campos.